Alright, back to Crystal Focus again here with the LED now. We're going to go ahead and switch off to that. Now, you're going to see here with this wiring set up here, we've got actually two wires coming off the, uh, the positive side of the LED. It's going to be kind of hard to see. Maybe, Brian, can you bring that wire in? There you go. And bring it in a little bit lower there. There you go. Um, why do we have two wires? Well, in this particular case, Brian, and remember, everybody's uh, wiring scheme is going to be different depending on what components are going in. Well, he's wiring in a motor that's going to mimic the Crystal Focus LED, the, the Luxian LED, that's being driven. So he's going to attach this positive lead, as you can see, just down here. And that'll be attached to a motor. And I'm just going to hold that up real quick. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it's just a little motor. So, um, you know, we need to add a resistor and all that later, but the whole point is, again, plan your wiring. That's really the real key. So, before we even get ready to attach this quick disconnect over here um, for the LED and the heat sink, we added this extra leg to make sure that the motor would be uh, all set up. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and pre tin some of these wires. Uh, you've seen some of that before. Um, and I'll let Brian take it from there. So again, he grabs a soldering iron. <clears throat> He's gonna get a little solder on the iron. And there you go. We'll just get some of these wires tinned up a little bit. Okay. I'll probably cut a little bit back here so that you guys can see it once those wires are attached. Because you can obviously know that we're gonna be attaching these wires in here to the Luxian contacts, which are just down below there where the coil is, the uh, copper coil, and it'll attach there. Okay, so we'll cut out of that and come on back. Okay, so these wires are now pretend, and you'll see down here that he's just going to touch the positive uh, lead on uh, for the LED. And again, with the soldering, it doesn't take very much. You just need to get the solder to melt a little bit, and it'll flow, and the wires will be nice and strong and connected. And again, he'll just kind of test it by give him a little tug on the wire. It doesn't have to be super hard, but he just wants to feel that, yeah, if this went under a little bit of strain, that it'd be okay. And then we'll proceed with the negative. So if you can get that one in there. And again, like I said with this video, we're trying to show as much as we can, so you can see where they actually go. And again, he's gonna pretend that um, the soldering iron, or I should just say, you know, gets a little solder on there. That really helps your soldering, so don't ever just try to take your iron from being 100% clean and then put together pre-tinned wire. That's good and all, but you want a little solder on the iron, it will help everything flow. Okay, so there you go. Now moving to these other connections, of course this is to get the quick disconnect. I'm just gonna zoom out here um, so you can see what he's doing. There is that positive lead again that he's got sort of the wires are, I guess the best way to say it is they're wide together. <laughs> Not wide like long, but Y is in the, the letter. He's kind of made a Y connection for that other lead to go back to a motor some other time and it's basically, again, going to be mimicking the uh, current from the Luxian. Um, you do not want the motor to share the negative lead with the Luxian, um, um, only the positive. Alright, so there he goes with soldering in together the Y connector here. Why? Because he wants a motor in there later. I know that was cheesy, but so what? <laughs> You know, again, this kind of thing can, it takes time, it takes patience and precision, especially when you're hand soldering. If you have a whole lot of awesome skill in soldering, and you've been doing this for 25 years, you're pretty good, but uh, it will take time for everybody, okay? And you notice one thing that we've forgotten on this wire so far, and it's not a big deal, is uh, he just remembered to use the heat shrink. And that's easy to do, it's not a big deal, so you can always adjust for it later. But how about for now, Brian, you can just finish sure. the, the black one and put the heat shrink on that one. Just want to put some heat shrink on that one first. Yeah, and it's easy to do. And that the whole point, actually, the solders is, if you make a mistake, um, instead of leaving it, you probably want to go back and fix it because it might just come back to haunt you later on, um, depending on what it is. In some cases, you might just say, "Oh, forget it. I can put." Um, there's some heat shrink that it just cut off. Um, I can put in some electrical tape, and it's fine for one or two connections. It's really not going to harm you that much, but. Um, you know, if it's a really important one and you, you think it's going to short out somewhere, try to cover it. Okay, that's a m very important thing to do is cover all of the places where you think um, the wires could short out or whatever. Okay? You could just do the black one right now, but it's okay. Okay, perfect. There you go. So you see, that's actually a good example. I'm actually glad that he made that mistake. It's just like sometimes we all do that. 
Um, he, he just shows how easy it is to just release the solder. That doesn't mean it's weak, it just means that's the whole idea, is you can release the solder just as easily as you can uh, put it together. Um, also with the coloring, it doesn't matter what color the heat shrink is, as long as you know what the wires are doing. Um, that kind of brings me to while he's doing some of these things. You can use whatever colored wire you like, if you're able to pick up different color uh, wire in a store that you like or whatever. You can use uh, whatever color heat shrink you like. Maybe it will signal to you that it's a certain uh, thing. Maybe it's a switch. Maybe it's a, there you go, there's a good solder. Uh, maybe it's a, 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 the battery connections, whatever you like. There are some standards in the industry that everybody's pretty, probably clear on, which is black being negative or uh, uh, ground, uh, or and red being hot or positive, sometimes referred to as hot. Um, other colors are really up to you. I mean, you often see a speaker as blue. Um, you might even see it yellow. So there's a lot of colors that are really up in the air. But again, it's what makes sense to you. If you were making some professional project, well, like uh, Crystal Focus, and you can see that Irv is shown some wiring guides on, he'll often mark things with colors so that you can tell more easily in the uh, uh, in the PDFs and all that stuff. Okay, so there you go, some more strong connections. Then you can just slide up the heat shrink, grab the uh, lighter. I'm trying to find where the heck is that thing. There it is. And then he can uh, heat those guys up. Okay. And after this, we won't really show um, quite as much as all of the different trials and tribulations that you'll have going from each wire, because it just takes too, too much time, and it's a lot of repetitive stuff that you'll see. But essentially, we'll show you, okay, here's the next wires being soldered on here. Here's the heat shrink going again. Perfect. And then yet another one. There you go. You can see how that stuff shrinks down. Excellent. Okay. And then we'll move on to the LED in just a few seconds. All right, so onto the LED. Um, as you can see here, we still have the quick disconnect, but um, that's the nice thing. He's gonna disconnect the quick disconnect to make it easier for him to um, solder the LED uh, uh, leads on to the LED itself. We've kind of pre-crimped the, um, the wires there, um, and uh, that way it'll make it a lot easier for the LED to be attached to the, uh, the lead. So he's gonna go ahead and solder those right now. Um, sometimes too, it's up to you for extra hands. You can use uh, electrical tape. That's a good extra hand to use. And so he can tape this wire into place so that later when he's gonna solder this uh, part on there, um, it'll be a little bit easier for him to do. And again, I am here and I could help him, but we're trying to make this setup so that if you were alone in soldering it just on your own, because most of the time you're not gonna have like four other people helping you to try to solder something together. It's usually on you. So, you know what I'm saying? So you just get it done. Just solder those leads really quickly. So again, a touch is pretty much all you need. Um, some people have mentioned how the K2s can be a little bit more difficult to get the solder to flow, but um, I personally haven't had a lot of problems with them. I think a lot of that has to do with, again, people should uh, pre-tin the LED as another component, just like a wire. There it goes again, this camera. Um, and at the same time, pre-tin the uh, wires and all that stuff. And essentially just melt the solder pad a little bit. Melt, the, <coughs> excuse me, the solder, that's on the pad onto it. Um, as you'll note, the K2s don't tend to come, that I've noticed, with uh, the solder pads all covered with uh, solder. Only these uh, main two ones that the legs that actually come from the LED go to. You can see here, now that I've zoomed in on it, and he's got them on there, good job. Okay, so one quick thing that we can do, of course, and this is just good to do, is once you even have it on the heat sink, you might as well test your LED. Now, over here we have a 3.6 volt uh, lithium ion battery. Um, so that's a pretty good voltage to test and we can do this directly to the LED because this LED down here is a Luxian K2 green. So he's just going to go ahead and touch the leads to it. Again, you don't have to do anything fancy. You just touch positive and negative. You're not going to blind yourself if you just touch it for a brief moment. This proves that it works. And you don't want to leave it there more than, oh, I'd say a couple of seconds. Besides, just doing that quick flash tells you it works.